Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Hazmat Guys. It's kind of weird having this headset on because it doesn't matter where I am. It's all the same audio. I and that's why I like it. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm obviously not in my my uh, palatial studio. No, you're not. You're. You're. Did you get kicked out of the house? I did. Uh, are you I in a homeless in, shelter, Bob? I'm in the Section Eight housing, and you it are. is. It's nice. It's, um, <laughs> it's not. You know, the, with the window open, the air is moving, and it's not so horrible. Um, but yeah, you are actually. Ago. Literally in government housing right now. I am in government housing, <laughs> quite literally. Uh, I will give out a shout out to the uh, the people I'm hanging out this week with. Uh, they are all uh, big fans of the show. Of the, I think eleven people, uh, seven of them listen to us on a regular basis. So, uh, what up, peeps? And they are awesome people. So, uh, this one's for them. So, do, do you um, want to give a, a quick synopsis of where you are? I think we're going to summarize soon about my thoughts on this uh, this class. Um, I think there's a lot to be there. I, I, I am going to say it took a little bit of CPR to get this one going. Um, the two guys up front are doing their best. Uh, but now the second day, it's almost like they told us what the whole thing's about. So the first day was almost prep and uh, a little uh, – I don't want to say intentional misdirection, but um, it'll be an interesting summary. <laughs> the, yeah. All right. Very so, cool. Well, uh, once you leave there, and we won't yes. say where there necessarily is, um, where are people going to be able to find us? Because we're still we're still MIA through the summer. Yes. I, well, I think the world is pretty much still MIA through the summer, and September. We yeah, get I think, hammered. Yeah, I think uh, that is where Virginia, uh, which is Mike, uh, Cold Zone, which is me, and Massachusetts, which is both, are going to all happen in short succession, like probably within a week and a half of each other. Yes. So if you're going to see us, come and see us there, and you can buy us all the beer and booze you can possibly uh, shake a stick at. We will accommodate. Yep. yep. Unless you're going to so, – uh, I'll be a cheap date. I don't really drink. so I will not be. <laughs> you will not be. I will not date or drinking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Mike texted me this idea for today's uh, show. And I, you know, we do this a lot where Michael kind of surprised me with the topic. And I intentionally spiked the ball on this one because I thought it's a great topic. And I do not, I didn't even look and cheat. I Yay. don't want to know anything about it. <laughs> I, I I am kind of excited about this one because I can see this being a very big topic uh, and something that we could take to the world. Yeah, and I it once it's properly frayed out, I guess would be the right words. I think it falls very much in line with other topics that we've talked about at conventions and on shows and things like that. Right. Uh, and really, we're almost chaining together. Uh, a huge, I don't want to say series of information, but really a pathway to be able to go from one spot to another. Okay, so six-second elevator preview, what is this about? Okay, so I'm going to read this ver verbatim from what I wrote. Okay. If, if you Google handling a crisis, you get two major categories, right? The first is very six much... Up. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hold on. Let, all right, try it again. Ready? Whoa, that was close. I almost had to go to the 20-second rule. Go. Okay, go. <laughs> what happens when things go wrong, and can we really take lessons from non-emergency services like business and, and apply them to our world? Interesting. We're, was that six seconds? Close enough. I'll take right. it. <laughs> the elevator so, pitch. Okay, so because we're in a different business, because we're in a world – that is evolving second to second based upon 3D values. Can you apply any metric to improve our situation? Right. So basically the idea is, uh, and I have certainly been involved in situations that went sideways, uh, where it was like, holy crap, this just went bad and it went bad fast. What do you do? How do you cope? How do you handle? How do you take charge? How do you right the ship once you realize the ship is sinking?
Okay, I'm you're, back. Okay, I was going to say, yeah, I think you're frozen. No, you 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 went, and I stayed very still. So I will just cut that there. So um, oh, okay. got it. Um, so I, I would think that you're going to need to break it up into. Does this complicate the emergency, or does this complicate? Hmm, not efficiency. Our, our our company perception. Like, is it a problem of like somebody doesn't know where a hose is, or is it like we're going to look like buffoons because the fuel is going to go over the drum? Well, okay. So I started turning around, and I I asked the question, trying to like kind of play all this out. Was like, all right. So what are some of the challenges on a hazmat scene when things go wrong? Okay. And funny enough, embarrassment is the one, two, three, four, like fifth one down. I think embarrassment is probably the number one because I mean, like, I think we do some stupid things knowing they're stupid to save face for company, self, or department that puts a lot of jeopardy in. It it certainly does. And it, it almost kind of goes along the lines of, you know, how they push to be like, if as a firefighter, if you're in a bad spot, you need to give a mayday. Like as much as nobody wants to give a mayday, you have to go on air and you have to be like, yeah, I effed up. <laughs> right. And there is something, you know, I need help. And those are two two things that I think are really – they're hard to get over. But we have a bunch of other stuff at a hazmat scene that makes it difficult to write a ship once the ship has started to, to sink. And uh, one of the first ones I wrote was communication. Okay. And, and the communication in the fact that the the knowledge of the scenario is separated from the command of the situation. Okay, I know where you're going. Explain it to me. Okay, so when we talk about the uh, we talk about this extensively in the chief, you're going to crash uh, lecture, where one of the big downfalls to a hazmat scene is the people who know the most about the situation yes. are not the people in charge of the situation. So, in the emergency services world and the hazmat world. Um, things tend to need to move quickly. And if there's a problem or if things go sideways, there is a lapse in time from getting the information from the people who know what's going on to the people who are in command of the the scenario. Okay. I'm going to break this into two parts because we had a lively discussion about this very topic today, unbeknownst that we were talking about this tonight, is that the importance of giving clear, concise, and actionable information as the subject matter expert to the incident commander is incredibly important, right? So, and we're assuming that the incident commander knows zero, right? Which is likely in most scenarios. The problem comes when you run into a situation like with me and Mike, where we have an intermediary that knows. Just enough to be dangerous, and he's my mouthpiece to the incident commander. Right. So in one situation, whereas if I had direct input into that incident commander, I am going to give clear, concise, and actionable wording to him, but I have the ability of influencing it with what I want by framing the information in a certain way, spinning it, if you would. Without the telephone game. Now, if I add that third player in there and I and I spin it the way I think, and he doesn't have confidence or he doesn't apply it or he doesn't generally care, um, that all the spin in the world is going to change that act. It's a telephone game of, of, of problems, and that could become an issue. Because if you look at something as face value and say, okay, well – this is my problem. There is a simple solution, but it's not in my best interest to do this because of my meter will break. It's going to take too much equipment, too much manpower. The Super Bowl's on, what, whatever it might be. Um, I might be able to spin it in a certain way to tell the guy I want to do this. The chief might not care, my, my intermediary, right? and might spin it away from that. So do you agree with that? I mean, like, is that. I, I do, I do. And I can think of, I can actually think of a couple of times in which. You know, the scenario has gone 
through people and has always ended up different. And then there's one specific scenario uh, that I was on. I believe we actually had an episode about it. We had a, a, a flipped over track, not a flipped over track trailer, a, a box truck, a mixed load type of a thing. And it had flipped over on in the Bronx and there was the potential for a really deadly poisonous liquid to be this. yeah you remember this right the, to oh, be yeah. in that in that scenario and uh because it was in it was in the load right we had identified it in the shipping papers is this methyl isocyanate no it wasn't methyl isocyanate oh i remember no, another one then yeah okay, no this ahead. was uh this was a chemical i had ne- i'd never even heard of and uh so we're monitoring and we've got all the information on it and we're we're downhill. I mean, we've got a full complement, right? It is a big hazmat scene to begin with. It was a big hazmat scene. So you're talking about multiple levels of uh, between- Command infrastructure. Right, the command and the infrastructure. So I was downhill from the rig, from the, 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 the truck that had flipped over, and I'm standing there with a battalion aide, and I'm looking at this. Now, this is two hours into the incident. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was just a mess of a, of a thing. And we had already known that the substance was there, but we were pretty sure that it hadn't leaked because we weren't getting X, Y, and Z, but it wasn't coming up on our PID. So we were still being very careful. And I'm watching this clear viscous liquid that perfectly matched the description of the poisonous product. And I'm watching it go down and it's like behaving funky. And I'm just kind of like BSing with the guy and all of a sudden it clicked that this could potentially be the liquid and we have a leak and I look up and there are people no longer in proper PPE for this poison, no longer operating safely for what the situation now dictated and the situation was going sideways very fast. And in that instance, I turned around, I walked, I bypassed my officer I bypassed the hazmat branch supervisor. I went straight to the incident commander and I was like, we have a huge problem right here, right now. This is what we have. I need everybody at that truck away from the truck. They need to go on air as they're walking back down. I need the command post moved because you are now downhill from a hazmat scene. I need this, 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 and this, and I need it done right now. And if I need to get on the air and tell people what to do, I will. Are you okay with that? And the it was like a two star chief because it was a like, huge what? thing. And he yeah, and he turns around and he goes, Yeah, go ahead, say what you have to say. So I got on, I cleared everybody from the scene, everybody walked down, and then I handed it back to him and he reestablished control and we moved on from there. But there was no in between the telephone, like at that moment, the decision that these people are in danger meant more than I have to notify my officer. Then I have to explain everything to my officer. Then he has to explain everything to the hazmat branch supervisor and then the hazmat branch supervisor. Like there just was no time for that. I'm, I'm totally cool doing that. And I mean that I, 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 I swear to you, I'm not second guessing that, but what I'm kind of guessing is cause I'm listening, I'm listening to your story from a person that's listening to it. Even one of the people that are in class with me right now, and they'll be like, well, I could never do that. So what tools do we need to give them so that they can say, not just confidence wise, I'm not talking about they, they don't have the cojones to walk up to the incident and go, listen, bub, and grab him by the collar and flick him in the nose. Like <laughs> I'm saying, you know, I'm saying, where do you get the wherewithal to speak with authority based upon what is it? Is it your knowledge of chemical and physical properties? Is it your, your your hazmat prowess? Is it the amount of episodes you've listened to the podcast? Like, seriously, well, I've listened like, to all of them, so I was able to really have the confidence. <laughs> I did too. Um, no, but like seriously, like where – what gives you the authority to do that? Because what if – I think a lot of people would say, what if I'm wrong? I was what wrong. I, but that's good to say that. I'd yeah. rather call the mayday. Right. No. And, and I did. And, and that's, that kind of lends to the embarrassment coming in with the communication. Like I had to say, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what this is, but as of right now, it matches the description of the poisonous product 
And if it is, we need to do X, Y, and Z. All right. I'm going to peel back because a a lot of you that listen to us are in the fire field. And you'll kind of understand what I'm saying here is there is two levels of immediacy. There's urgence and there's maydays. And urgent means everybody take notice. And maydays means everybody take action. Meaning right. you're going to do something because I just said the word may day. If I say urgent, which is what Mike – well, actually, Mike said a may day basically there. Yeah. yeah. And he said do this now, and that is a may day thing. He didn't say the words may day, but you can understand the gravity. There is really nothing higher in the emergency structure in the fire department than a may day signal being given. They tell you in school – over and over and over that if you have something that's actionable and you believe strongly in it, there is there is nobody that's going to second guess you because it is a good move to do it. You can always dial back the resources. And you're supposed to, in a mayday, bypass the chain of command and go right to the top. Oh, you, yeah, you, you are told to push the button if you have the button and go mayday, 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 blah, 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 blah. And then the incident commander hooks up with you. So you can be the probie. You're going through 17 layers of, of incident command, and the incident commander is talking to you directly. He doesn't talk to your boss or anything like that, which is exactly what you did. You, you physically iterated that. You physically walked to the incident commander and made verbal communic- – like right. fist to chest kind of communication. Right. So so maybe that's maybe that's the answer, especially – maybe that's kind of the answer that we've been looking for as we've been trying to, to, to dice this together for years is establishing in your mind the urgency and comparing that to a mayday where, where you turn around and you go, in the hazmat world, this is a mayday and I am going okay. to bypass my chain of command – I, 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 you know what? There, there was a class I gave, and I'll, I, I'm going to quote this as fast as I can because it really does play into this thing. Is that we come from uh, a fire background, and I'll give you a, a cross examination of this thing. Is that that Navy fighter pilots have to go for um, uh, punch out drills? I don't know what the hell you call it. Would you eject? You know, and so they have a very strict thing where every six months they have to go to school and they say, you're in a flat spin. What do you do? It's if, then pull. If, then pull. You're just declining more than X amount of thousand feet. Pull the button. It's There is no question. And if you don't get a 100% on it, you don't fly. You're out. Really? That is the deal. Okay. Right? So if I tell you, hey, Mike, you're in a burning building and you fall through the stairs from the first floor to the basement, what do you, are you calling a maid? And you go, well, how much air do I have? Did what anybody company see am me? I? Did anybody right. see me? How much fire? How many lines are in the fire? And so there's always this, well, there is no well. There has to be a black and white line where if this – than that. If you are trained to the technician level and you see a sludge coming down that thing, then you tell the incident commander by any means, whether it's faster to walk to him or to get on the air, but say to him, I have a legitimate concern, transmit to Mayday right now. Because you can do that on the radio, but because I walk to him, I'm not allowed to do that. Right. Right. That's a that's a that's a that is I cannot believe that the idea of maydays and urgence never has crossed my mind. Why can't they be a hazmat mayday and urgent? Like, they, listen, take again. An urgent is take notice. Hey, we lost line pressure. We have an exposure issue. Uh, the hydrant's frozen. Whatever it might be, but take a, a mayday. That's take action. And hazmat has the ability of calling those two options. And that would eliminate the two communication issues that we highlighted, which is the separation of knowledge and command and everybody being on the same page quickly. Aren't you glad I didn't look? I know. I'm telling you. If I had a mic, I would drop it. You would drop it. But don't drop the headset. That would be weird. It would be weird. (laughs) (laughs) No, but like, you know, like I don't – I. there are a lot of things that we can take from the fire side or the police side. And bring it into the hazmat side or vice versa. I just don't think we think about it in the same way. I think we think we're an island unto itself where in hazmat, we have the hazmat huddle. But where does it go from there? 
Right. Like what happens about – can we have a second huddle, a third huddle, a fifth huddle? How do you constantly update a huddle in which people are constantly getting the newest information and the most up-to-date information? Incredibly infinite. If you do a sampling pack, new huddle. If we did a wardrobe change, new huddle. If we did a decon, new huddle. Like seriously, you can have – we've been at instances where we've done multiple, multiple wardrobe changes because this, the mission changed or the environment changed. Why can't you have multiple huddles involving the incident command and say, okay, here's the new parameters that we have at stake here? Again, that's my two cents. Yeah, no, 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 no. The, the, it, it, it's good, right? I mean, we still have other things that we need to hash out to make sure that a situation goes sideways. But those are the two, the two biggest ones. So, all right. So let's, let's uh, walk away from the, what we were talking about before and let's go down this path. Okay, go. As a hazmat technician, what, how do you, fireside, right? We have the acronyms that let us know what a mayday is. We have the acronyms that let us know what an urgent is. How do we start to hash that out for a hazmat scene? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say Jack that. Jackass. <laughs> no, I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. Um, no, um, could we get all fancy and and create a whole new mnemonic for urgents and maydays? Yeah, no, you could. I don't think we should because that's not the hazmat way, right? It's the hazmat it. way is to not create like this structure Strict. because it depends, right? Yes. I think we have to figure out a way of incorporating all the information and knowledge that we have to be able to say, I felt like – the situation deemed direct conversation. Okay, I'll give you then two two different ideas that just popped in my head. Um, one of them is what we used to do when I was in my previous company. We would say something that was innocuous over the radio, uh, and it could be something like there was, uh, and this is I didn't even know about this, but there was something about um, Secret Service or something like that had a thing where the uh, the the, you know, the cat's dead. When you said the cat's dead, that meant the bioassays came back as positive. Okay. And I'm going back to September 11th kind of stuff. So, you know, you say the chicken's in the pot uh, or, or some ridiculous thing than that. That means, hey, listen, and, and this was a serious thing. This was this is something I used a couple of times was I would just say, hey, Mike, I can use the hand on the second floor. It sounds innocuous on the thing, but that was basically our in-company mayday. That if I said I need a hand on the second floor, everybody dropped what they were doing. They were coming because that was our signal, like our guys in trouble. Right. Now, I know we're going to have people going, well, that's irresponsible. I understand that. Yeah, but you, they have to understand in the defense of what you guys were doing. If you gave a mayday, and this has nothing to do with embarrassment oh. or anything like that. If you give a mayday at a fire scene. Like all hell kind of breaks loose. Oh my God. It's, it's not crazy. organized. Everybody wants to try to help. Where as if you just need a hand from a few people that know what yeah. they're doing, that's the way to do it. It's actually the more responsible way to call for help. It is. So if I, if I can use one of those innocuous type things saying, okay, we – and this is our signal word. Like I honestly have one of these with my kids, whereas if they're in an uncomfortable situation, all they got to tell me is, uh, yeah, you know what? I like uh, – I'm going to make it something. I, I like popcorn with butter on it. I, all they got to do is say that at a party, and I'm on the way. I know what the trigger is, and I'm coming to pick them up. So – can you do one of those things where this is the trigger to rehuddle with new information has been introduced? New, uh, there's a problem that's a mediocre problem, and you can have three of these things. You can have one that's a light problem, medium problem, and a right the hell now problem. Right. We can say chickens in a pot, and everybody's like, okay, put down your tools, back out. What the hell does that mean? Doesn't matter what it means. It means we have to talk right now. Right. Situation has changed dramatically. I think I think pretty much if you can turn around and, and see a scenario in which the situation has gone sideways and life is in danger, because that's really kind of what a mayday is, right? There's a life in danger. 
either now or in, or in short order. Or in short order, right? Like soon, like like imminent. the suits degrading. Like oh, gee. and it was a situation with that where, where one of our guys, thankfully he's not with us anymore because. He, <laughs> I don't like that guy. Anyway, um, he read a line on the chemical uh, compatibility sheet, and it was like 480 minutes. And when he went to move his finger across, it clicked down one line, and he went across, and it says, not okay, or something, whatever. And he got on the radio. was like, get out. It's going to blood. Like the whole – Really? This, oh, yeah. I remember that. Uh, and, and, and the whole scene degraded to panic. It was like the scene in Airplane where it was just screaming and running around. And it, he's like, oh, my bad. It was the wrong line. <laughs> Oops. Oopsie. Oops. And that was the end of that. So, yeah, I, I, there, there are – you know, there is now – you know what? This is actually a pretty good thing. I would put this on the table at work and say, you know, we're going to say blue, purple, and green, and I'm making a total of things. Whereas if we need to rehuddle, this is what we're going to say. Everybody know, and I'll make a big poster, and it'll be in a rig, and we're going to resaturate every day on that to get a reconvene. Yeah, I think there's a lot more to pull out from this. I mean, literally, we just did – all we talked about was communication today. That was 26. We're at, we're at 26 minutes and 35 seconds. So uh, I think there is a lot to talk about when it comes to when the shit hits the fan. How do we go home safe? Yeah. I, I, there's definitely more because there's multiple aspects to this. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the next one you're going to throw out. Wow. 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 Wow.